take a crap in the middle of the city and shut it down. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another Bundle Banter. Today we've got Humble Bundle coming in hot, or at least kinda hot, <laughs> with the Skylines Bundle. If you like sk City Skylines, you're gonna love this bundle because it, it's only City Skylines and it's DLC. So let's take a look at the tiers and see what we got. For $1, you get the base game. You also get Deep Focus Radio. whoop de doo For Beat the Average tier, you've got Skylines Concerts, Content Creator Pack High Tech Buildings, Skylines Snowfall, and Skylines Natural Disasters. In the toppest tier, We've got Skylines Mass Transit, Skylines Green Cities, Skylines Industries, Skylines Campus, Content Creator Pack Art Deco, and Content Creator Pack European Suburbia. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the spiel because we got a lot of stuff to cover and I got a lot of stuff to say about it. So, with that said, let us talk about City Skylines, the base game. This is the definitive city building simulator for the modern age as far as I'm concerned. Basically the only thing that could possibly compete with the classic SimCity 4. Build your city as a pristine technological mecca or do like I do and submit the denizens to the slums of poor city planning. You'd expect nothing less from the Philippines. <laughs> Shots fired. I don't exaggerate when I state that this is one dense game. There are tools to manipulate almost absolutely everything, and things to consider that I'd never even thought about until I was knee-deep in shit traffic and trying to dig myself out. The graphics, the music, the execution is all fantastic, even if the game ends up ever so gently and elegantly handing my own shit on a platter each and every time I attempt to boot it up. There isn't much explanation, which I guess I've come to expect from simulator games, but even after 10 hours in-game I can't really seem to make any headway. I guess I'll just stick to theme park simulators because I don't think city building is really my forte. I really enjoy the ride, even if it always ends with the crashing and the burning and the pain, but I always question some of the decisions that they made in the stock game. Why do less than 10 people live in a skyscraper? Why does the vanilla game fail to focus on transit when that's basically the biggest hurdle in the game? Why can nobody fucking drive? Okay, that last point might actually be accurate to real life. But my point about the lack of transit options still stands. I love Paradox Interactive. They published some great stuff, but the DLC in City Skylines is just so heavy. You can mod the game fairly easily for free, it has workshop support, but certain things are indeed locked behind this big fat paywall. If you were to buy the game and all of the DLC at full price, you would be dropping over $200 on this one game. We're headed quickly into train simulator territory here, folks. Okay, okay, that's an exaggeration. There are only 29 DLCs available at the time of writing, and you'll actually get 11 of them in this bundle. Does it actually include the best ones? I suppose that's what we're here to find out. So we shall start out the DLC coverage with Deep Focus Radio. <laughs> this one's honestly kind of a laugh. 16 tracks get added to the game for $6. Bro. I play this game with the audio off, and the choicest tunes playing via YouTube. The tracks themselves are some fitting lo-fi picks, but if that's what you're interested in, why not go visit that chilled cow stream, beats to study to, or whatever it is. I'm personally more into shitty punk rock, which might be why my cities always end up looking like a giant pile of trash. While the tracks themselves might be pretty passable, there is a repetitive radio DJ that makes me want to give this one a solid skip. Grand Theft Auto Radio, this ain't. So just take that $6 and get yourself some Spotify Premium, or God forbid, even YouTube Red. Concerts! Oh no, is this another crappy music pack? No! It's even worse! Okay, not worse. This DLC adds one building, a concert hall. This concert hall ends up being not much aside from a money sink, so why would you ever throw a concert? Well. Some of the rock and pop that they got going isn't completely terrible. They're songs from bands that you think you've heard of, like Lily LaRue. City skylines for the chill. I'm racking up my bill. I hope you'll know what to call it. So let go of my wallet. Yeah, it's not that LaRue. 
The concert hall does give you something to mix up the aesthetic of your cities, but it won't really make you any money, in my experience. And like I mentioned, I do like to play this with the sound muted, so this would be about the equivalent of wiping my ass with $7. I guess it's okay to include in this bundle, but it's so far from necessary. Content Creator High Tech The Content Creator packs are interesting because they basically hired modders that have been working on the game and monetized some of their content. Which seems scummy until you realize that the modders are at least getting some percentage of the sales from that content. Which seems nice, but how big that percentage actually is, hmm, <laughs> there's room for speculation. But anyways, content creator high tech. You can hit the workshop and get almost any kind of building that you like for free. This is purely a cosmetic bundle, but it is pretty cool and it adds a futuristic bent. At a $5 price point, I don't think that this was worth its salt personally, but thrown into a humble bundle, eh, it doesn't hurt anything, I suppose. Do you feel like building an electric car factory that won't actually produce any electric cars? Hey, good for you. It's fun to pretend, isn't it? I don't think my games ever progress far enough to require worrying about a technological epicenter. My people live in the slums, and they're happy about it, damn it. Although, it might be cool to build a rocket ship just to launch any dissenters into orbit. Yeah. Snowfall DLC. If this was just DLC that added snow, you better believe I'd be the first in line to drop a huge steamy shit all over it. Fortunately, it does include an additional transit option that kinda pulls it back from the jaws of absolute uselessness. What kind of transit option? Well, the one and only travel option that any city of worth needs. Monorail. 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 There are also some cool additions that make people require more electricity and such during cold weather. Overall, it is another pretty useless DLC pack, aside from that desperately needed extra mode of transit. My main question then becomes, why did they not just include a tram system in the original version of the game? It seems cruel to bundle something so essential with a weather system that nobody was asking for. If it made the seasons change, I might go a little bit softer on it, but as it stands, you'll use this for the tram system, and nothing else. It's $13, and if you're paying full price, you're out of your fucking mind. When it's included in this bundle, well, it's a step above the content creator pack since it actually does help to solve the traffic congestion problems, but when this is the best DLC in the bundle so far, it's not looking good. Natural Disasters Hey, now things are starting to look up. Are you seeking to add a bit of spice to your gameplay? Natural Disasters has you covered. Experience the majesty and abject horror of Mother Nature's entire arsenal. Earthquakes, thunderstorms, tsunamis, tornadoes, forest fires, sinkholes, and meteors. You are, of course, given a decent arsenal to counteract these threats. Information is power, as they say and you'll equip yourself to detect these threats before they happen, disseminate that information via a new emergency broadcast radio station, and do your damnedest to protect your people from harm. Or you can just sit there atop your ivory tower with your fingers steepled like some kind of mad supervillain like I like to do. This DLC is one of the top picks from this bundle in my opinion, if only for the fact that it provides a more interesting end than simply being starved of cash. Mass Transit this DLC, this DLC, this DLC fixes the biggest problems that the majority of players experience when playing City Skylines. The traffic. Slam some money down to get a DLC that probably should have been a free content update to fix one of the most egregious things about the game. And now, you've got a ton of ways to get things operating smoothly. Ferries and cable cars and even some more outlandish shit like ski lifts and blimps. You could certainly hit the workshop to simply improve the metro if you've only got the vanilla version of the game, but why bother with that when you could snag this DLC for a steal? Would I recommend it at full price? Hell no! But this DLC truly is the saving grace of the bundle for people that play City Skylines with any degree of seriousness, much like the Natural Disasters DLC is the saving grace for people that don't give a shit about optimization. There are many accusations that this should have been included in the base game at launch, and I definitely don't disagree with that, but Mass Transit DLC is here, and it fixed what was broken, albeit for a mint if you're paying full price, but we don't pay full price around here, so hell yeah, 
be grateful it's included for sure. We could have gotten more creator packs. Green Cities! Three amazing expansions in a row? Well, this bundle's starting to look up. While this DLC doesn't increase the complexity of an already somewhat overwhelming game, it does serve to add more options, which is always a good thing. You can turn your residential areas into vast landscapes of greenery, which look much prettier than the vanilla models. You can implement new, eco-friendly policies, start up wind farms and recycle centers to provide for citizens without creating excess pollution or garbage. They also include some new maps to sweeten the deal even further. Tropical, boreal, temperate zones, they can all mix up the gameplay if things were starting to feel stale for you. There isn't really anything added here to deal with the infamous traffic, apart from biofuel buses, which are the same buses that we had, just run on biofuel now. Which I guess is better for the environment? Whatever. This DLC is my third pick for the best in the bundle. It makes everything look prettier, while also being functional. Industries. Let me be clear. Now let me be clear. Let me be clear. City Skylines is not Rise of Industry. It will never be Rise of Industry, no matter how hard it tries. So stay in your fucking lane, Skylines! Sorry, sorry. I got a little defensive there. But this really is City Skylines jumping the shark as far as I'm concerned. The game was complicated enough, but then add to that an economic slash industrial simulation, and your head is gonna fucking spin right off into orbit. It's just too much to take in. It can change the game up, but not in a good way from my experience. If you want to play economic guru or industrial baron, then Rise of Industry pulls it off a hell of a lot better, because they built that game from the ground up with that one goal in mind. City Skylines just kind of threw it on top to see if it works, and in my opinion, it really doesn't. It's like baking a beautiful city cake, and then you frost it with all the terrain tools and city building sweetness, and you set it out for sale, and people are like, wow, yeah, this is tasty, I like it a lot. And then the dev is like, wait, I have something that'll make you like it so much more. And then they head into the back and they come back with a box. And everyone is all, ooh, I can't wait to see what's in the box. And then they proceed to dump a cardboard box full of ringworm filled dog shit all over the delicious cake. Everyone immediately leaves the shop and the dev just shrugs. They'll be back tomorrow. <sighs> we just never learn. On to City Skylines Campus. <laughs> this is the last of the mechanically functional DLC packs. And Campus is, eh, middling at best. It makes the education system a bit more expansive, and attempts to really include it as a part of the game. Unfortunately, as we all know, the college education system is a scam, and you will see it in action as your campus has managed to generate a massive profit, even on hard mode, once you reach a certain amount of renown. Of course, it also adds another layer of micromanagement to a game that already felt overwhelming to me even just playing with one or two DLC packs enabled. Turn on all the DLC and enjoy getting slammed in the ass with a giant micromanagement cock. Giant micromanagement? Well, it's kind of a misnomer, but you know where I'm coming from. Who finds this fun? I don't even micromanage my own life to this extent. I'll be damned if I'm gonna do it in a video game. Oh, I should probably also mention that this DLC has quite a few bugs included, absolutely free. As if you needed another reason to ignore it completely. Again, I don't think that this is the worst thing in the pack, but it definitely isn't doing the game any favors in my book. Content Creator Art Deco. I do hate to shit on these content creator packs, because the proceeds do go to the modders who work so hard to make the game truly great. But Art Deco? Really? Nothing screams pretentious louder. If you're a fan of sleek lines with geometric ornamentation, then you probably get a kick out of your revamped and stylized city. If you find it as pretentious as I do, you'll give a brief nod to the creator of the pack, and then promptly shovel it to the bottom of your DLC list. Matt Crooks created hundreds upon hundreds of workshop add-ons for City Skylines, and that deserves at least a bit of acknowledgement. I tried to get a current count, but his workshop page seemed to have been misplaced by Google, which makes me wonder if there's a bigger story to uncover here. Anyways, some people seem to have wet dreams about Art Deco, but probably only because someone with a platform told them that they should like it. 
I bet if you pinned one of them down, they couldn't tell you the difference between Art Deco and Art Nouveau. <laughs> content, content creator, European Suburbia. Another content pack with no functionality, aside from making things prettier. No longer will you stare motherfuckerly at a house and wonder if it's actually a book. While I don't think the houses look as nice as they do with the Green Cities DLC, it can work well enough if you're looking to emulate the look of some European cities. Having never visited Sweet Mother Europa myself, I can neither confirm nor deny the authenticity of these models. But they certainly look nice enough. And honestly, the modders that work so hard to tirelessly transform this game in endless ways definitely deserve more than the pittance that I'm sure the creator pack leaves them with. Obviously, on PC, the creator packs aren't much of a draw, but on consoles, where you can't even mod, <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. But I guess that's what you get for insisting on playing a console, right? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go boot up my Nintendo Switch for the 20th time today. <laughs> God damn, that is more than I ever thought that I'd talk about City Skyline. So, let's, let's get a count here, alright? We've got the great DLCs, mass transit, natural disasters, green cities. You basically can't do without them. They are super good. In the OK tier, we have snowfall, campus, and industries. In the abject crap tier, we've got concerts and deep focus radio. And then there's three DLC creator packs. So we're basically looking at a 50-50 split of good versus bad and or useless. Because the creator packs aren't necessarily bad, but they don't add anything to the game really except a few models which don't do anything functionally so would I recommend this bundle um I would recommend the first tier you get the baseline game you go ahead and go crazy in the steam workshop everything else that is offered here can technically be done through the steam workshop granted your your transit system is not going to be as varied but it's functional and that's basically all I can ask for 18 bucks, you would need to go to the top tier to get the best content. Because middle middle tier really only includes natural disaster, that's the only thing of note. And mass transit is really the, the DLC that you quote unquote need. So $18, it's, it's way too much, unless you really love city building. I don't really love city building. I'll play with the baseline game, I'll fart around for a little bit, take a crap in the middle of the city and shut it down once I run out of money. You know what I mean? For a dollar, you can't beat that. That's that's definitely awesome. But most of the packs included in here are, are basically just to bulk up the count. I don't see a whole lot of point to it. So I would recommend that you pick up the $1 tier for City Skylines, the base game, if you don't have it. It's up to you if you want to go up into the highest tier. I think the mid middle tier is kind of a waste. It seems like from the beat the average price, people tend to agree with me. It's currently sitting at a $7.30 average. Which means that most people are opting for that $1 tier. City Skylines is a pretty cool game, but I think that the amount of DLC that has been shoveled on top of it, uh, is borderline egregious. Even if you pick up all 11 of these DLC packs that are offered in Humble, you'll only be a little over one third of the way to <laughs> completing the entire game. Which is ludicrous, isn't it? I tend not to buy DLC just on principle. Because when horse armor first came out for Oblivion, everybody shit a brick, and now we just kinda bend over and take it. Well, I ain't gonna take it. You give me a standalone game or you give me nothing. With that said, I do buy DLC from time to time. But only if it's super worth it. <laughs> and I don't think any of these really are, aside from the three that I mentioned. Green Cities, Mass Transit, and Natural Disasters. It really is a nice bundle, especially if you like City Skylines. But, uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend going for the lowest tier, if you're gonna go for anything at all. But that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys decide to do with it. Did you go to the top tier? Are you a big spender? Did you use my link in the description and, and the pinned comment? Because I'd really appreciate a little kickback from that. Thank you so very much. I also hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We got some giveaways going on the Discord. I always want to thank my patrons, Radim and Cisco, Damon Darkstar, Nico the Legend, my most stalwart ally. This has been Bundle Banter, the city's Skylines Bundle. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I do hope that you've enjoyed. 
and I shall see you in the next one. Fanatical Lockdown Bundle. Mark it on your calendar. <laughs> There's so many games in that one too. It's like 23 games. Ah! But I'll do it. I'll do it for you. Thank you guys so much <laughs> for listening. I'll catch you then. And until then, friends. Bye-bye.